Hey everybody, it's Troy from Bar Run Forge and it's the very first of our Tuesday tool videos. And today, we're gonna make a coal swab. Stick around. So what is a coal swab? Well, it's kind of what you think it might be. It is a fire maintenance tool. When we are using coal or coke, uh, there is a process that has to happen in our coal forge. And part of that process is called coking. So if we're using coal, we have to get it down to a form called coke. How we do that uh, to help out is to have it close, the coal close or in or near the fire. Sometimes we don't want all of that on fire at the same time, so we have to wet it down. Oftentimes, we will use, uh, some people use a cup on the end of a stick, uh, dip can or whatever. We often use these right here. We'll grab a little bit of water and sprinkle it around. Problem is, that kind of has its limitations. You, you know, it's very easy sometimes to dump a bunch of water down in the fire and you know, either douse it or the fire pot is made out of metal and sometimes cast iron you don't have a tendency to even crack it and damage it. So one way to do that is with these two items. The material needed for our coal swab today is, first of all, our rag, any kind of terry cloth type rag. Uh, this is an old towel. And what I have done is I've cut a section out of that towel so where we can keep, if this one wears out, we can replace it, put a new one on. The metal we'll be using is mild steel. This is a bar that is 3 8 square or I believe nine and a half millimeters by 20 inches long, which is I think uh, 450 plus millimeters or thereabouts. And what we'll do is we'll put a long taper in here and that taper will probably be at least about five inches and on a square taper all the way down to a really fine point. Then we'll curl that up almost like a pigtail, pull it out like a corkscrew so we can thread and hook this rag on right here. And then we'll just put some sort of design or handle uh, that we like down here at this end. And that'll pretty much be it. Start with our long taper here. Okay, we've got our taper done. And we were hoping for about five inches. We got close to six, so we should be good there. I'm gonna make a mark about where that five inches is and just hit it on the corner of the anvil to give us an idea where that's at. One good strike, make a mark. That way we know where to start our curl at when we go do the pigtail. So we're gonna do that right now. Find our mark we made, which is right there. Turn that in. We'll start using the horn to shape. And just continue to use the horn. Checking it. We're going to curl it past itself. There we go. Just keep checking. 
checking it. Until we get it about the circle that we want. That's about right. Okay. And just continue to take that curl on around and just keep collapsing itself. And as we develop that, we just keep an eye on how everything turns. We need to put back in the fire, put it back in the fire, and just keep scrolling it up. Let's take one more heat, and then we'll get that finished up. Not a very high heat. We just need to move it. Continue that scroll and curl it up. All right, so you can see, give it a brush. See that bend we made, the mark we made, then we continue to curl it, made that, all those rotations around to this pigtail. So now what we're gonna do is basically make a corkscrew and heat that all up again, grab scrolling pliers, and basically just pull it out until we have a corkscrew. All right, so we hope we got enough heat in here to get it started. Kind of get that pried out. This first piece right here is sometimes hard to get. And you can use scrolling pliers. You can use any kind of pliers. I actually started with this pair of pliers. This is actually a pair of needle nose pliers that I took the uh, grinder to and simply just ground the, the grooves off. Sometimes that's all it takes to get it going. So we'll just keep prying that out and working that out until we have a corkscrew. And you definitely don't wanna um, mess up your work that you've already done and worked so hard for. So do several heats if you need to and just keep working on it. Instead, just keep working it till you're comfortable with what you got. Stretch it out as far as you want to stretch it out, not too far. And what we'll do here at the end is make a little bit of a, a little bit of a hook right there. So we'll actually heat that up in the fire and uh, make a little hook at the end. Go ahead and curl that in a little bit more. And do that with the hammer. Straighten that out a little bit. And then just simply make a hook. So the idea for the hook is 
actually thread the material on that all the way up through here and then just start kind of feeding it in and make a couple hooks, almost like you were putting a fishing worm on. So that part is pretty much done. We'll brush it up and we'll go back to the other end to make a handle. All right, this end will be our handle. Uh, we'll just kind of free form, see what we like, and some sort of handle that we can hang on a hook so we can have it readily available. Go ahead and start the rounding process on this. Take off the first edge corner. Rotate. Rotate. Just work. And just work up and down the bar. Now that it's rounded up and to a point, we're going to heat it up one more time. Go about right here, bend it 90 degrees and start making our loop and twist it around the handle. Again, right where the taper begins. All that straight. So now what we'll do with that heated up, we'll make a circle with it and then wrap it around that. We have the element that holds the swab or the rag. We have the handle in the style we wanted to, use, to do. Excuse me. I'll see you when we uh, start to put the swab on right here. All right, so we decided to put a twist down here just for decorative purposes. I think that's the end of it. So now we get to put the swab on the stick. So what I'm gonna try to do is Go about halfway 
and literally it's a matter of just stabbing it through there if we can get it to poke through and there it did <laughs> all the way down feed it all the way down the spiral get it down to the end and then what i think we'll do is we'll pick a side and curl it in and take it in that way now, there's probably a bunch of different ways to do this And this is the way I'm doing it. Again, just keep feeding it down through there. And eventually you'll kind of wad it up in there and get a, a good grip. Okay, so we got that side. Pull the other side over. And tuck it in there. And I'll come back to you when this is all done. So here we have it, a completed coal swab. See, it's all done, got the rag on, it's not going anywhere. And so now we get to put it to use. Pretty simple. Dunk it down in your bucket. And places where you want to wet down the coal. And we want to do this as a matter of um, helping with the coking process and controlling our fire. Okay, and just keep that wet. It's a really good controlled way. The steam that's produced through wetting down this coal helps in the coking process. Not a whole lot more complicated than that. Well, it's a happy day here in the shop. We finally have our coal swab. And we're, I really like this. It turned out really nice. I'm really uh, glad to have it. I think it worked exactly the way it's supposed to. It's not that complicated. It's just however you want to go about doing it and, and uh, kind of what style you want to use. The process down at this end is pretty much make something that'll hold onto a rag so you can dip it over top of your coal and to control that fire and to quench it where it needs quenched and let it go where it needs to let go. And so where I'm drawn is into 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And starting in verse 16, this is some really great news for us and really great encouragement for us. Verse 16 tells us, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. For this... It's God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Listen to verse 19. Do not quench the spirit. And don't treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. That's something we can, we can do in the fire with our, with our coal swab, but it's something we can do in our lives. And the reason we can do that, the reason we can be controlled in that, to not quench the spirit and, and to test all those things and hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil is when we're always rejoicing, we're praying continually, we're giving thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will for you. This is what he wants. What could, what could be bad about that, right? What could be bad about rejoicing all the time? What could be bad about praying continually? What could be bad about giving thanks in all circumstances? and rejecting all evil and holding on to what is good. Those sound like great things to me. And if we don't, we find ourselves kind of quenching the spirit and not only quenching the spirit, quenching our spirit. Thank you guys so much for coming in. We appreciate you in everything that we do. Welcome to our very first Tuesday tool video. And uh, should be the first of many. And uh, we appreciate you coming in. God bless you all. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.